Hey everybody, it's your boy Chili here, coming back at you with some more hot STD gem action. And today, we're, it's, it's a big day, it's a momentous day, we're moving on to phase two of my master plan. Phase one, we're covering these general algorithms, you know, the non-modifying sequence operations, the modifying sequence operations. These guys, they're good, they're useful, but there's not a lot of meat on these gym bags, you know what I'm saying? There's very little meat in these gym mats. I mean, look at four each, you look at all of, you're like, yeah, that's cool, but I could do that with a for loop, pretty much the same amount of code, it's not that hard. But now we move down into these guys here. These are some more substantial algorithms, and each one of these sections is very focused on a certain algorithm. So what we're gonna do today, is we're gonna do the partitioning operations. The main function here is gonna be std partition, and you've already seen this guy if you've gone through my intermediate C++ program. I use it in the meme fighter program here when I am lining up the fighters so that they can fight each other. So I partition the container for the two teams such that all of the living fighters go at the beginning of the container. So when I fight these two containers against each other, you're gonna have living fighters match up with living fighters as much as possible. And that's all that partition does, right? It just, you give it a predicate and it will put all the elements that satisfy that predicate at the beginning of the container and all the ones that don't satisfy at the end of the container. So here it is right here, you give it a range, you give it a predicate, and it will partition that range based on the predicate. It also returns to you an iterator to the partitioning point, which is going to be an iterator that points to the beginning of the second range, or the beginning of the range that fails the predicate. So if we look at this in action, well we've got two containers here, one's a container of strings, the other is a container of ints, and now we're going to print them out, we're going to partition them, and then we're going to print them out again, and we're also going to print out the partitioning points that we capture from the return value. And uh, th the way this works, you could read this if you understand how algorithms work, it's probably not going to be that complicated, right? So what are we doing here exactly? Well, we're partitioning A, and the predicate is going to take strings. And what the predicate is going to do is it's going to run any of over all the characters in that string to see if any of them are E. So what it does is if any characters in the string are E, it will pass the predicate. If, and if it doesn't have any E's, it will fail. So this is going to put all the E's, all the strings that contain at least one E at the beginning of the container. Second predicate is a lot easier. It's just going to be mod two equal to zero. Basically, if it is even, put it at the beginning of the container. And if we run this, we see that yes, all the strings at the beginning of the container here, they have an E and all the ones at the end, the last three, don't have an E. It's been partitioned on that predicate. And in the second container here, we can see that we have all even numbers until we get the five, and then it's all odd numbers. And if we look at these values here, these outputs, we can see six is the uh, value at the beginning of the second range, the failing range, and five is the value at the beginning of the second range here. All right, now, there's one interesting thing we can note here. We've partitioned our container on the predicate. Uh, but the relative order of elements within partitioning ranges is not the same before and after the partitioning. So here we have 0, 1, but then it jumps to 10 and it's down to 3. So within this partition range, it has jumbled up all the items. And sometimes you want to partition but maintain the relative ordering between elements in the same partition. You can do that. Now all you got to do is change your partition into a stable partition. And there you go. You will now as long as the uh, elements are in the same range, they will have the same relative ordering before and after the partitioning operation. And now we see within ranges, they are now ascending because they were ascending before the operation. So that can be useful. But of course, there's no free lunch, right? So stable partition is in general not gonna be as fast as a partition that doesn't have to worry about relative ordering. Uh, so don't use it if you don't need it, but if you need it, it's there and it will make your life easier. Now the other guys in uh, the partitioning operations, they're not very complicated, but they are useful. Is partitioned, I mean that's pretty much self-explanatory, you give it a range and a predicate, and it will tell you with a bool whether the range is partitioned or not. Uh, so if you want to know, there's how you can check. Now partition copy is quite interesting, uh, so let's take a look at this guy. Normally if you see a, you know, a copy version, 
of an algorithm, you say, okay, this one doesn't work in place, it outputs to a different container. But this one's, a, there's a little more of a twist to this one, because it outputs to a two different containers, or two different ranges. So what you can do is you can have a single input container, but you can output your, your true range and your false range to two separate containers or two separate ranges in the same container. Uh, and that's, that's interesting because you can actually split the contents of one container into two. And it's also interesting to note here that because we are outputting to two different ranges, the return value is a pair of iterators to the ends of the two ranges that we output to. And this guy is very interesting. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you an example of using this a little later on. But first, I just wanna go back and look at the last guy, which is partition point. And this one is super simple. All you do is you give it a range and a predicate, and it will give you an iterator to the start of the second part of the range, as long as your range is partitioned. Given that it's partitioned, it will give you the partitioning point. And as we can see down here, the, uh, the complexity of this one is log n. So it doesn't just do a scan from the beginning, it does basically a binary search, so it's pretty efficient. All right, now I've got a little bit of a challenge for you to uh, hone your partitioning skills on, if you so desire. So we've got a struct thing, has an int and a string. Here's a little overload to make printing easier. And what I'm going to do here is I've got two vectors, a and b. a is a vector of things. I want to run this function split partition on a and b. And what it's going to do is things that pass the predicate, passed into split partition, they will remain in A. Things that fail will be filtered off and split into B. So they will be removed from A and put them in B. Uh, that's the idea of split partition. Now there's one more condition on split partition, that is that I wanted to move them using move semantics. So not just copy and then erase from A, but actually pilfer the resources from the objects in vector A and move them into B. So that's one of the, yeah, that's one of the main conditions. But yeah, if you're looking for a challenge, implement, you can copy this code here off the screen, there's not much of it, and implement split partition, just as I have outlined. But I'm gonna do that right now. So, first of all, this problem, if you were not able to use partition, you might think that you could do it with just something like copy if. So we use copy if, and then we would use an iterator adapter to use move semantics. And that would sort of work, except we would be left with empty husks for the things that were moved out of uh, A. And you might say, okay, that's fine. You got these empty husks, but we can run remove if to remove them, right? And that, that seems, on the face of it, that seems good, but how do you determine which ones are empty husks and which ones are still living uh, objects? And you might say, well, if you move out of a thing, you're gonna do moving on its elements, you're gonna move out of the string, and the string is gonna become an empty string, and that's how you know it's an empty husk. Except if you look at this one here, some elements start off as an empty string. So you can't use empty string as a condition for remove if. So that means you can't really do it using copy, but you can do it using partition. There's two ways. I'm gonna show you the cool way, and then I'll just tell you the dumb way. So the cool way is to use partition copy. So what we wanna do is we wanna partition source. We wanna output to two different ranges. The first range, the ones that pass, will go back into source. Second range will go into the destination. So, fairly simple. All we're going to do is we're going to go auto ends because we're going to get some ends for both of those ranges back. And we're going to go std partition copy. And then we got to do source.begin source.end source.begin again destination that begin well no because we want to actually insert into destination so scratch that we want to do std back inserter destination yeah that's better and then the predicate is just going to be p right so that's sort of okay except not really because we want to do moving not copying so how do we do this with moving? Well, we go std uh, move 
iterator? Make move iterator. There we go. So we make a move iterator from begin, and iterator's got a match. So we do the same for end. And uh, then our destination is going to be back into begin and inserting into destination, like so. So there is the partitioning part. Now when we partition, we're going to have empty husks, but we're going to have a pointer to the range of empty husks for our source. So what we do then is we go, well actually we can just do dest dot erase ends dot first and I think we'll just need source dot end. And this shouldn't be destination, this should be source. Destination will already be the, the proper size because we're not we're not writing over existing elements, we're inserting into the back. And there you go. That should be it. That's all you need. And now we've got our two ranges here. We've got we got boots and cats, boots and cats and boots and cats. And we also got um, butts and bits and this empty string here. Beautiful little implementation there of our split partitioning, our filtering operation that can split a container filter into two separate containers. Now, how we would do this if we did not have partition copy is we would still use partitioning, but we would partition just a normal run a normal partition on the source. And once we finish that partition, the second range, we would just do a copy with a uh, make move iterator into destination with back inserter. And finally, we would do an erase on that second range of the source. And it would work the, f it would work the same. But this one is sexier and a little more efficient. So there you go, there's the partitioning operations. Partitioning is something that you have to do fairly often in programming, not, probably not quite as often as sorting, but it's still fairly uh, important. It's an important uh, component in larger, more complex algorithms. And the ability to just call it out like this with some interesting variations is uh, it's very helpful as a programmer if you got this in your sleep. But that's going to about do it for today. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you soon with some more STD gems. Mm -hmm.